expressed on the internet would be censored. We are live. We are live. This is real. Welcome back to Unauthorized Opinions, uopod.com. Like, share, subscribe. It's pure propaganda and it's super cringe, by the way. I literally went to the polls with nothing in mind. I saw a can of orange soda in the parking lot. <laughs> and it's I was like, yep, there we go. An unopened can of orange soda just chilling <laughs> in the parking lot. I was like, yeah, I got to vote for Trump, dude. Your podcast sucks it's mental mate it's absolutely mental i'll be honest i thought it was kind of offensive when you talk so much about the loch ness monster political climate and andrew treat yourself okay especially if you start i don't know getting getting in good with homeless people unauthorized opinions streaming everywhere at uopod.com doom <laughs> Oh my god, we're back. I'm on my phone in the middle of the podcast, but we're back this week. We have so much to get to, and of course, something really serious happened yesterday. We might have a couple guests come in that I invited last minute. Um, We have so much to get to here, and this isn't... This isn't a thing where, you know, I want to go off the handle as much as I'd love to... And this is going to be a thing where we have to be careful what we see on YouTube. So we'll just be referring to what you probably already know about a little bit more vaguely. We'll be referring to some of the other, you know, theories that have come up around this, uh, let's say, Trump incident. What words will be flagged by YouTube? I don't know. You tell me because I'm not entirely sure. What's going to get flagged on YouTube? I'm looking around because I'm trying to get everything sorted here um, and being trying to be extra careful about what words are being used because this is the state of the politics that we're in, right? <clears throat> For the better part of eight years now, we have been tiptoeing around saying the truth. And, you know, it's gotten a lot better in the last few years, obviously, but as a person who isn't exactly, you know, a hardcore liberal or isn't exactly a person that the establishment would espouse, would agree with their opinions. Um, As that type of person that I am, we've had to be careful, had to have been careful this entire time about what we can and cannot say. The same is not true for the other side, however. The same is not true for those who... Um, you know, they're in Hollywood and they toe the line on that in regards to gender and everything else. The same is not true for them. They get to say whatever they want. And this is what has happened. You know, this event has happened yesterday already. It was, it was kind of shocking in the afternoon. You know, you get, you get a message like this. I'll tell you how it happened for me, you know, for just history's sake, we get a message from a person. I won't say who. In our in our uh, the, the, the Slack is like a thing that companies use to message each other, um, and somebody says, "I just heard that Trump had this thing happen again." If if you're sitting there thinking that I I'm not saying anything because I trying to be unsure about it, this is just because of the YouTube algorithm, right? So this happens to Trump. Is then I'm listening to it on a crappy radio signal. Can anyone confirm? And then of course. Everybody starts bringing in the footage and all the conspiracies start happening. At first, you're a little bit shocked as if, did this really happen? We don't know. We don't know exactly what happened. But now, we pretty much do. And after that, you sort of think, hey, what did you kind of expect to happen? And I want to bring in friend and uh, fellow lover of politics, Louis Brackpool, in. And Lewis, oh. welcome to the show. Hello, How are you? England you just lose? Uh, don't remind me, because I'm still looking at it. <laughs> and I think Spain are about to pick up the trophy, so it makes it even more painful. <laughs> okay, well, we're talking about the Trump incident. We're only calling that because of the YouTube algorithm. We're not trying right. to protect anyone's feelings. So I'm going to okay. say what I was about to say, and then I'll, I'll bring, bring you in for your response, all right? Mm-hmm. So basically... What I'm saying here is when, for years now, we've been having to watch what we say. And then on the left wing, and we'll just say the uniparty or the establishment, they get to say orange man bad forever. 
and then not expect something like what happened to happen. Now, I'm not blaming what the person did on any one individual, because obviously it takes a psychopath to do something like this. But what I'm saying, it's kind of like, you know, let's say the Democratic Party has been saying for eight years that Trump likes to steal oranges because he's an orange man, an orange man bad. Uh, Trump's a serial orange taker. He steals oranges every time. He's a threat to orange shipments. Every time you see him at a rally, he's talking about encouraging people to steal oranges. He's encouraging people that the oranges are theirs and they don't belong to anybody else. Now you set up the situation where if somebody walking down the street who doesn't like Trump sees him with a bag of oranges, they're just like, look, at the, he's doing exactly what they said. He's inciting orange stealing. He's stealing oranges himself. Uh, I gotta, I, I'm so sure that he's stealing these oranges, I got to put a stop to it. That's the equivalent here, and I know it's silly, but you have to think about it from the log logistical standpoint of you're saying that this person's a threat to democracy for years and years, and that he wants to take your rights away, which he hasn't done, and he controls the Supreme Court in some way, even though they agree with him on, disagree with him on on a lot of things. His vice president was against him the last time. He's a threat to democracy. He's harmful. Words are violence, by the way. We're throwing that one in. Words are violence. Um, they don't want you to exist if you're transgender. They don't want you to exist if you're gay. If you're a woman, they want to take away all your rights. This person is the worst person in the world. We are better for you. Trust us, the pseudo-communist government. But anything you might do to accomplish this you know, that's on you guys. We don't want that to happen. They want the communist government overthrow to happen. They just want to be sort of in charge of it, kind of in a Chinese way, um, a, a modern communist way. And they want you to think that there's some sort of permanent underclass. They want you to think that they have to rise up. They want you to think that words are violence. They want you to think that misgendering is violence. This is all establishment talking points. And then when something terrible happens, it's sort of just like, well... You know, maybe guns are the problem. Um, I think it's quite clear to anyone who has paid attention to anything, and Lewis, I'll let you jump in now, that the rhetoric of calling your your foe, your political foe, evil, a Nazi, sexist, anti-gay, USA, go away, person who takes advantage of other people sexually, calling your per your opponent this constantly, when you could argue that the person who he's running against does have the sex crimes calling this your opponent this constantly is going to result in at least i'm going to say 10 percent of the population taking this super seriously and then you fragmentalize frag you know subtract from there divide from there is what i'm trying to say but the the amount of crazies that that will affect so if trump was going out and saying you know january 6th and get in there and you know smash some windows or something there's a small percentage of crazies who will take that very seriously but he said you know march peacefully and they say that's evil compared to what they say when go and march peacefully is considered evil on one side and then the other side is nazi rapist destroying democracy, taking all your rights away, you, and that's not somehow inciting anything. It's hard for me to take anyone seriously, even more so than I already didn't take them seriously, when they say, oh, I, I didn't know this was coming. I didn't see anything like this. Lewis, do you have any thought on the responsibility of rhetoric? And you come from a country where rhetoric is very, you know, it's picked apart in some good ways, some bad ways. Do you think there is a particular responsibility for rhetoric from the Democratic Party or from the left-wing establishment? Or do you just think, and and I'm not trying to sway your opinion here, do you think that the person, the, the responsibility rely, lies solely with them? Um, so here's my view on it. Uh, uh, if you keep saying... If you keep saying to the public that this particular person is literally like the Austrian painter and that he is a threat to democracy, and if you keep pumping this out for years and years, even when this person isn't in office, he hasn't taken power and is just running as a, as a nominee, you are going to get someone who's going to take it so seriously that they feel like they need to be almost like a, a martyr for some sort of cause that the establishment, the establishment media just want to take up and, um, and paint. 
So I come from, of course, Britain, where, like you mentioned, rhetoric is very, very serious over here, where you can be jailed and, well, not jailed necessarily, but sued the minimal for giving rhetoric that could be deemed, I don't know, either offensive or, I don't know, to the bone, really, to how to to put it bluntly. And so here, if you make a mistake like that, it's pretty serious. There was a BBC radio presenter recently who mentioned about um, maybe Biden should commit this incident on Trump uh, because he's a threat to national security. He claims it was satirical, but it's been resurrected again. And this particular presenter has gone a bit quiet because he's realized that he's messed up. Now, here's my view. I don't think it's wise for the media establishment to keep saying that this man is like the Austrian painter just because he has different ideas on how to run the country. Look, I get it. Trump's the outsider. He always has been. He doesn't have to do this. He could be on a golf course or some sort of lovely resort that he can buy out and just sit around, drink, eat Big Macs all day and just not care. He doesn't have to do this, but he does it because he loves the country. Uh, I genuinely believe that. And he seems very sincere when he says it. So when I see that and I see the mainstream media blob from not just the United States, but Canada, the UK and other places in Europe, attack and demonize him and after this incident turn around and say uh yeah you know what popping noises instead of uh, actual shot noises <laughs> whizzing past oh and he fell to the ground to me that just screams that they almost wish that a different outcome had occurred and it's sickening it's disgusting and it shows that if you're on the side of the media or on this on the side of the establishment, uh, then I'm sorry, but you're the enemy of the people. And that's it. And that's what I truly believe. Very good points, Lewis. And I think that, and I'll mute you just so there's no, you don't have to worry about any, uh, any feedback. Um, I think there is this belief and it's go it goes back to 2017 whereas if you were on the correct side you can say anything you want it goes back to punch a nazi remember that stuff floating around social media where if you think that the person that you're up against is so bad then you can basically do whatever you want to them and i'm what i'm doing right now is i'm pulling up an image as i was just as you were talking pointing out on Instagram that you would join the show. Here's what just came up when I was tagging Lewis Brackpool in um, this store in this Instagram story, Lewis. Um, this account <laughs> has repeatedly posted false information that was reviewed by independent fact checkers who went against our community guidelines. Do you want to, to mention him in this or t- at mention this account? Why, yes, I do, because I would like to determine for myself whether or not what Lewis has said in the past has been true or false the idea that some somewhere exists some fact checking community that is completely unbiased is completely ridiculous and this is exactly what the left-wing establishment is it is we are correct and we have determined lewis brackpool to be harmful to you in some way shape or form therefore you need to be told that he's bad because you can't figure it out for yourself and that's completely insane a properly functioning society would not feel the need to tell you this why do you, why would a regular person go up to somebody and tell you that somebody's dangerous because they think that they're going to do something bad for facebook meta instagram the powers that be the third dimension um for them to be like hey are you sure about this person that automatically denotes thinking that that person's bad that little hurdle they put in front of you that's supposed to be saved for like content that is like graphic in nature um you know underage sexualized content that extra hurdles there to make you think about it so when they put that for a person they want you to think about the social ramifications of what this is supposed to be and we can make fun of lewis all we want until the cows come home but when it comes to (laughs) when it comes to censorship it's absolutely insane 
they're allowed to say whatever they want. Now, Lewis, if you're able to stick around, I want to get to another topic here. And it's basically about, um, you know, I, I've been very much trying not to criticize people who are who are involved in this incident. But I, Dave Portnoy, who we, whom we all know and love, has pointed out that he can't stop watching this video of the female officers. And I'm going to lead into something else. But here's the video of the female officers. There's three of them on the scene. And they're largely not, you know, reacting in a way you would hope that one would react around such an incident. So you can kind of see the one here, she's it, unable to holster her firearm properly. This one's not really sure what's going on. And, and this girl, as we're talking, is still trying to holster her gun. Um, she's not sure what to do. There was another photo of her from behind. It's hard to tell with photos. People are going to, you know, speculate on everything. And then people, Lewis, I'm sure you saw this. People started going into the leader of the uh, of the Secret Service being a woman who used to work for what company? Do you remember? Uh, no, I don't. Apologies. She she worked for for some other company before, not having to do with self defense or oh, national defense. Yes. Yes, um, she, oh gosh, oh my memory's terrible, but yeah, I, but, know, I know exactly what you're talking about. But they're going with DE hire, DEI hires in this field, and it's absolutely insane, and I want to parlay this into something in a minute, but when I'm sitting there watching this with my girlfriend, and she's saying, why are there women in this position, as soon as the shit hits the fan their reaction time and she was fa fairly generous she was saying their reaction time isn't as quick as a man because of all all the, the things that we think about as opposed to what a man thinks about and you can see people behind trump there's like five guys who instead of huddling down they're just like where did it come from and they're leaning into possibly the line of fire and we know there was a line of fire because somebody else died but lewis are we going too far as a society in, you know, saying DEI hire, f female diversity hire, this, that, and the other? Or is this a real concern? And we'll try not to use, like, the airline example because it's an easy one. I'm taking that out of your, your portfolio right now, young man. Are we going too far with this? Or is this a legitimate concern that we should be having when it comes to the Secret Service and three people protecting the president, one person doesn't know what she's doing, the other one spending the entire time trying to figure out her holster. Uh, not every woman is Ronda Rousey, uh, if I'm totally honest. And, you know, Trump's six foot four and weighs quite a bit. I'm not going to speculate on how much Trump weighs, but he's definitely around six foot four. I mean, his son, Barron, is even taller. So the idea of a five foot four female trying to shield him and if you watch the uh the clip back of just after trump was shot in the ear um you heard the woman frantically shouting what are we doing what are we doing where are we going and you need pilots they there's a technique called caging the monkey right which sounds a bit weird but it's all to do with caging the animal inside you so when things go wrong when your stress levels peak, you're taught to cage the animal within you, to um, to stop you, yourself from making irrational decisions at a time when you need to make rational decisions. Pilots go through it, and I'm sure the civil, like not the civil service, the secret service, the FBI, uh, police forces, although the standards have lowered over the years now, they need to control the way that they act in certain situations. Now, I've seen a lot of people that have gone a bit too far and said, look, we shouldn't have women, period, in all sorts of uh, scenarios like this. I used to think that, I'll be honest with you, but now I'm kind of like, well, women have their strengths in areas such as domestics. Uh, they're very. We need women to talk to female victims um, because, of course, females would be a lot more comfortable to share information with other females. Um, so I, I don't disagree with that whatsoever. But sending a woman into the front line uh, in a bar fight or in a stressful scenario like this, where she where the woman has to cover the president um, or the former president with her entire body, 
I don't think that's right, personally. I, 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 it seems really, really off um, because you're essentially a meat shield. You're a, you're a meat shield. And I don't like the idea of a woman being a meat shield for someone else. I don't think it's right. Um, so that that's my opinion on it. Uh, I think both sides m might have got it a bit bit wrong because you have some people on like on the conservative side that are just saying women should be banned completely from doing x y and z where it's like well you know women have certain strengths in certain areas obviously men do and it's just a it's just a case about picking what's right uh, for that current scenario do i think a woman being sent to a bar fight is good no i don't do I think that women speaking to women victims is good for interrogation or to extract information about a particular case? Yes, I do. Do I think that a woman being sent to a potential domestic to help calm down a current situation? Yes, I think I do. But do I expect her to run after the assailant, to tackle him to the ground, to, to handle them and arrest them by herself or with another female? No, I don't. So it's situational. And I think it should be predominantly uh, male, especially in cases such as the Secret Service, where you're, like I said, literally a meat shield. I don't think it's right. Call me old fashioned, but I don't think it's right for uh, a woman to be a meat shield, if I'm totally <laughs> honest. It just it doesn't it, it doesn't seem right in my view. And that comes out of love that comes out of protection. That's not out of bigotry or misogyny or whatever other you know word you want to call it. It's out of protection. I don't want to see women in horrifically stressful scenarios where the stress levels will hit peak. And sometimes, like what we've seen with this current situation, there's flapping happening. There's, what do we do? Where are we going? What's happening? Like We don't want to see that. We want to see efficient work. And, we, and I just don't want to see women taking bullets for 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 dudes like and other women i guess so you know there's there's context and there's certain roles that i think men and women can play well wow, very sexist commentary uh no. no i'm just kidding i agree and i think if you're looking at it from the angle if you're trying to convince somebody that you're not being bigoted here if they still have those feelings towards it which people with blue hair undoubtedly will you have to say listen we're just trying to say that men and women have different strengths and yeah but the thing I... is mate the thing is to jump in there mm -hmm. they're always going to call you an ism or a phobe so i don't listen to the blue haired anymore there is no point in trying to reason with these people there is only divine intervention now that can change <laughs> these people's minds. So there is no point. It's programming, mate. You can't get through. I'm sorry. I know I'm a bit blackpilled with that, but there's no way you can get through, even with those comments, because it will go around the ticker and nothing will <laughs> Her name is Kimberly Cheadle, the director of the Secret Service, sworn in in 2022. She's responsible for twenty or 7,800 special agents she was formerly and i'll blow it up here now it's hard to zoom in on this one but she worked as a senior director in global security for pepsico so no military or police training before i think that is inadequate whilst it is something um and elon Musk says so before being in charge of protecting the president she was guarding a bag of cheetos <laughs> yes cheetos do fall under the line of pepsico neither here nor there let's not knock pepsi Maybe we should be, but to not have been in law enforcement, to not have been in, um, you know, a security company, to not have been in uh, the military, I would not hire this person to be in charge of of, no. of such an important thing. I would say that she would be fine to be in charge of the security for this is if she, if she did a good job there, she'd be fine to be in charge of security for another corporation. But the idea that you know, um, the bot the Pepsi bottling pan plant and I don't know, Truro, Nova Scotia, Canada, or maybe like uh, Dayton, Ohio. Are those under constant terroristic threats? I doubt it. <laughs> are you having to plan out city blocks in order to protect the shipment of, you know, Pepsi Zero that just came out? Maybe, but likely mm -hmm. not. So mm -hmm. I don't think that person would be qualified for that. I think... Um, she should resign, and I think the person who was in charge of the planning of the security of that day 
should be fired or be forced to resign without pay. To add, uh, I don't know if you've been checking Twitter. I'm sure you can bring this up as well whilst I'm explaining what's happening. Um, but there's a lot of mental comments <laughs> happening yes. online surrounding uh, Trump and the incident, especially one from Destiny, if you want to take a quick look. I don't know if you saw my reply to his. It's slowly encroaching a kind of ratio, maybe. We don't know. Uh, that is to hopefully be expected. But some of the mental comments I've seen where they're going through one of the victims that um, uh, one of the victims that unfortunately was uh, indirectly hit by. Mm -hmm. Very good parsing of words, though. I want to remind the audience this is just for YouTube purposes, not because we want to, you know, protect any feelings. We're protecting YouTube's feelings, I guess. Yes. But his response was, do you want me to go ahead and read it, or did you have more to yeah, say? Yeah, go for it, from the top. Um, so he right. says, this is the retard that said it, that got um, logged off. It's so terrible that we have to say these things because of YouTube. We can't really... T but the person who died, let's say, and he said they were a retard, which, you know, take that as you will, um, because he said something about Putin, 100%. He replied to a, a meme... Said, room is engulfed in flames. You can only save one. AOC, for the audio listeners, AOC, Hillary Clinton, Putin, or Biden. This guy responds with Putin. I mean, probably a question you shouldn't answer as in, uh, in general. You probably shouldn't put a, post a response to that. But the meme. It's a meme yes. for crying loud. And then Lewis responds to Destiny, who called this guy a moron for that. Um, after he's deceased, of course, mocking a man that was murdered by a mentally ill leftist by going through his old tweets and calling him an effing retard, real classy. Then some woman named Victoria Yerbug, he who's allegedly a doctor in the Navy. Okay. I was in the military, so I can make fun of the Navy. Um, oh, she's talking about that person. I take it back. <laughs> no, posting a Babylon B thing. I don't know. Um, and then you say, oh, no, he replied to a Babylon B post. OK, so she was being an asshole. So I will make fun of the Navy. Sorry, Navy. You're in the crosshairs. Um, I respect Navy SEALs, you know, but the swab in the deck people, you know. Uh, oh, no, he replied to a Babylon B post. And now let the notoriously post satire. Log off, Lewis says. Log off. The woman says he's such a nice guy, though. Or the woman says he's such a nice guy, though. And then you said, oh, so that means he deserved to be, you know, killed, disgraceful, log off. Did I say that? No. Obviously, they're going to play this game where they didn't directly say that because, you know, yeah. that's how people like this speak. The problem here is, Lewis, I know that you would not and that I would not just be like if, you know, if, if somebody and this has happened. The Diane Feinstein is a leftist who had terrible voted terribly. They wheeled her out when she was almost deceased to vote anyways. Disagree with everything. If Nancy Pelosi died for some reason, um, you know, I'm not wishing this upon her. If this happened to her, I wouldn't just immediately go on the air and be like, ho, 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 ho. You know what I'm saying? Like, there has to be some sort of grace period where you don't think it's okay as a human being oh, to just destroy that? somebody. Who was that woman uh, who died not too long ago? And then Trump, it was that video of Trump going, well, this is the first time I heard this. This is really sad. Is it Gain Ginsburg? Ginsburg? Rude Bader Ginsburg, the old That's Supreme the Ginsburg. Court justice. Ruth. So, a lot of things people disagreed with, a lot, including Trump. But it was like, wow, she was a, a like she lived a long life and she um she was a great woman, even though that he completely disagreed with her politically and that she was trying to thwart a lot of the things that Trump was trying to pass. So, I don't know. I think there's in politics, I think it goes a long way just to be just to be a bit classy about what's happened. Well, There's because they're going to do um, the same thing to you. And because, like, there are so many posts yesterday, Lewis, and some of the people that we both know who are just like, this is definitely what happened. And oh, it's just... It's like, how do you know? How do you know? You don't. And let's enact some common sense here. It's an insane thing to happen. Mm. It's just like... You didn't know what, imagine just saying on 9-12 in 2001, the day after September 11th, and just being like, this is what happened. And yeah. it's like, you know, looking back that there's no way you could possibly have known the details of what happened. 
Good and now you're doing this. They're doing it again. They do it for Palestine. They do it for Israel. They do it for Ukraine. They do it for COVID. Every single thing. Yeah. People keep having to jump on and then they have to dial back or delete their tweets. And I understand why people go immediately to conspiracy theories and saying everything's fake, but there's degrees to which things, you know, Listen, can even be I'm fake. I'm not opposed to someone saying, look, this might be, I don't know, staged or whatever, as long as you can prove it. Don't just show, don't just say it like on a whim. Like, <laughs> Oh, look, look, it's stage, mate. And you're like, well, okay, well, what's your evidence? Well, look at the other events that have happened in the past five years. And I'm like, that doesn't prove anything. Tell me. Tell me exactly why you think. Is it because of X, Y, and Z? Is it because of this, because of that? And it's like, no, I get none of that. It's just, well, (laughs) look at what's been happening for the past six years. It's like, do you know what? Shut up. Log off. (laughs) Delete your account. How about that? Like, you're you're literally a burden to this conversation go away (laughs) leave me alone i want intelligent i want analysis i want here's something that i found that might be quite interesting to look at Mm -hmm. like for example the democrats blocking um trump ordering more secret service agents to protect him and that they brought in a new bill like a new act or whatever that wanted to strip trump from using the the um the secret service to protect him like that's insane that's like okay well that could point towards potentially that the democrats uh i'm not going to go fully into it because obviously it's youtube and you don't know but you know that could that could show some nefariousness from the democratic party like and and you show that and you go okay well maybe there might be something here let's look into it but people are just like no it's fake no didn't happen it's staged and I'm like, well, tell me, tell me what have you got? It's like, no, well, Trump's part of the club. He loves Israel. So that's why he's part <laughs> of the club. I'm like, oh, right. OK, brilliant. When it rains, blame the Jews. That's literally it. I'm just <laughs> April, so, bored. I'm so April 19th. Um, this is how many months ago? June, July, August. About three months ago. A uh, top host Democrat wants to remove Trump's Secret Service protection if he's sent to prison. Mm. Representative. Benny Johnson, not, or sorry, Benny Thompson. Sorry, Benny Johnson. That's a reporter. Benny Thompson wants to deprive Donald Trump of Secret Service protection if he's sentenced to prison. It's unclear what will happen to Trump uh, if he's sentenced to state or federal prison. As a former president, he is entitled to Secret Service protection. Well, the easy answer to that is don't throw former presidents in jail. I mean, yeah. I guess there would have to be some sort of circumstance where you might, but overestimating the value of your. Real estate prop- property doesn't seem like one. Um, the former chairman of the January House Six, January Six House Committee, which kind of tells you uh, where his mind is at, introduced legislation that would strip uh, President Trump of Secret Service protection if he is sentenced to prison. Unfortunately, current law doesn't anticipate how Secret Service protection would impact the felony prison sentence of the protectee. You don't say. There's no. Uh, there's. There's no thought from these people about why that might be the case. So that was just what Lewis is referring to there. And, um, you know, that's a couple months in advance yeah, of what happened. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, okay, that's legitimate. That's that's decent. And, you know, I, I have my criticisms of Trump and, you know, other things and, you know, Israel and, you know, lots of other different subjects. But there's no, there's no substance. I mean, I got into a, an altercation with... Um, the lizard man earlier, uh, you know who I reckon, who, who <laughs> the British. Wow, lizard. he's saying and, names. Yeah, I am. And it's it's this framing of when the right criticizes or when the right asks questions, it's normal. It's a, like a normal day or whatever. And I'm like, mate, what are you on about? I don't understand this weird framing of, look, we are asking questions. There are many people that are asking why was this assailant allowed to scale a building 150 yards away from Trump and be able to fire five shots and the Secret Service decided not to take him out before he fired the shots? There are legitimate concerns there. And how that months prior, we've just shown you that the Secret Service 
the, the idea of more protection to Trump or to strip away the Secret Service from Trump is um, was on the cards via a new legislation proposed by the Democrats. So there are legitimate questions to be asked with regards to it. But just to go out and go, it's fake. It's a psyop. Oh, did you know that it was actually a psyop? It's like, how do you know that? Nobody knows what's going on. You're sitting at home and making a judgment over over posts on the Internet. Like you're not there. You're not interviewing people. You're not gathering information. You're not making a thread. You're sitting there and going, well, it's actually all a psyop. It's like, do you know what? Log off. Delete your You account. want me to bring up the tweet? You want to go, go full in? All right. Yeah, let's have a look. England lost. He's lost his mind. We're bringing it up. My temper. Um, and I'll be caught in the crossfire for sure for showing my face, but I don't care. I'm part of the establishment. I'm part of the system, man. Um, so this is a response to Lewis saying, I think when people say it's fake and a psyop with zero substance is disrespectful and logically flawed, but asking questions about the guy, um, managed to scale a building with a weapon, crawled his way into position to take five attempts interrupted is incredibly suspect and i'm paraphrasing there for the audio listeners uh david ike responds by saying but when the right say the same thing it's called asking relevant questions you can't have it both ways if the questions are flawed they will be shown to be so but not asking them does not test the official story to see if it stands up all questions have a right to be asked not only when the one side asks them the hypocrisy i'm seeing is a shocker ask the questions the hypocrisy i am seeing is a shocker. Ask the questions. Provide the answers. Job done. It's what the alternative media or parts of it used to do. And I'll play devil's advocate for you, Lewis, for you to respond to. Okay, what he's trying to say is, you know, any question should be allowed because they. this is a, a trying time. We should be able to answer it. Um, so there, therefore, no question should be out, out of bounds. I don't disagree. I don't disagree with it. I just don't understand what the relevance of it is. I think it's because I was replying to his son and, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe a call was made and that was it. But my point is this. Yes, we should ask questions. But if you're going to say it's fake and if you're going to say that it's a psyop, you've jumped to a conclusion. You're not asking questions. You're jumping to a conclusion without any substance. That was my point. So we actually agree, but maybe because the guy is, is in his 70s, he doesn't quite understand what I'm trying to say. And it's, it's such a shame because I don't mind him, um, even though he can stray off, especially with the lizard stuff. But my point is this. Yes, we should be asking questions. The right have been asking questions. A lot of questions. I've seen it. I've seen big accounts asking questions regarding this because it is weird there is a lot of things that do not add up and that's fine but what what does that any have any relevance to which people are immediately jumping to conclusions and saying that it's fake and saying that it's all a setup like what you think i think Trump plan this what, what are you on about <laughs> what are you on about mate famous words tom hardy am um, i wrong though andrew am no i, wrong? I think I wrong I think that when it comes to, and I'll give you a break here if you want to take a drink. Um, I think when you have something like this, I would agree with you in the sense where it's just like, yeah, questions have to be asked. We need to get to the bottom of answers. But if there's a robbery at the grocery store, and I know I'm, I went grocery shopping yesterday, so I sound obsessed with it. If there's a robbery at the grocery store, and you say maybe this robbery had something to do with the car accident down the street, you're just going to be like, what are you talking about? And then I'm just going to say what? Oh, I, I should be allowed to ask any questions. There are relevant questions. There are questions that jump to, to conclusions before we know it. And this is coming from a person who I think has, you know, like you said, how can I word this? They've asked stupid questions before. Whatever. I'll just dive into the deep end with you, Lewis. When you've asked stupid questions before and other people are asking stupid questions, you don't need to just come to the defense of everybody. And I'll, I'll parlay it to football because I'm a big U.S. NFL fan. There's a video that I saw a few years ago, a guy holding a ball. They said he was cheating and is signaling the defender with his thumb that he wanted to get that he was supposed to let him 
get into the the end zone for the touchdown. And I look at this and I'm like, actually, his that's just the grip that he had on the ball at the time. Completely don't see the thing you're doing. So you see one thing, you jump to the conclusion I would consider the idea that there can be stupid questions. I don't have to come to the defense of a person who's saying, you know, he's giving a thumbs up to get into the end zone. I don't have to come to that defense and say he's just asking questions, which I know is a hot debate on Twitter right now that just asking questions things. But you don't have to be the guy who's just like any questions fine. You don't have to be that guy because there are stupid questions out there. And now you're putting yourself into a position where it's like, well, this thing happened to Trump. What about X, Y and Z? Probably not complete related at all, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. So I see the argument where one might say any question is valid, but there are dumb questions. I hate this idea that people can just like shield themselves from any criticisms of a stupid ass question by saying there are no dumb questions. You talk to anyone personally, if you're talking to one of your friends and you and you say, well, Conor McGregor got knocked out last night, his leg got or he lost his leg got broken, and you say, well, was there a dolphin in the arena? That's a stupid question. It's not related to it. So if you're going to come up and be like ask these completely un- irrelevant questions, I'm not just going to defend you. And if you have a history of asking stupid questions are coming to st- stupid pr- uh, conclusions and obviously people are going to do you know, you know and I'll te- I'll give you an example of a stupid question that I replied to and you can double check this just to make sure one of the questions was why did the bullet miss and I thought really okay is they got him folks they got him they got Sorry. Lewis <laughs> oh I thought Back. they got you Lewis I thought yeah, the bobbies came knocking. Oh, <laughs> Lewis, you're asking too many questions, mate. <laughs> that was funny. Um, yeah, one of them was, why did the bullet miss? And I thought, right, brilliant. Okay. Yeah, because, oh, because if you were going to stage this sort of incident, you'd uh, you plant someone with a, with a particular weapon 150 yards away. Oh, and you'd make sure you clip the ear. You know, you've only got one shot at it, but you've got to make sure that you at least clip the Yes, hit. psychopathic, yeah. you know, 20-year-olds are known for their extreme accuracy using this type of thing. Yeah. And I'm saying thing for the algorithm, this type of thing from 125 meters. As, any, as a person who's used a thing from 125 meters with a similar style of thing... <laughs> Listen, it's right. not you're not you're not doing that i'm sorry the idea that you're doing that is impossible what i'm gonna say right I'm, i understand the cynicism i am cynical i have been since 2020 because without my cynicism i wouldn't be asking all sorts of questions but there are questions which go too far and not to say that you can't ask them of course you can but expect mm-hmm. pushback I'm going to I'm going to ask can you provide evidence for that? Can you actually formulate that? Can you provide substance for your claims? And if you can't and then you pivot because someone did it earlier, I said, "Okay, what evidence do you have that this was staged?" And someone said, "Well, if you look at the last 4 years and this other event and that and that." And I went, "Okay, well that you're pivoting. You don't actually have any evidence. You're being facetious you're just pivoting to another event to cope because you've realized you've been caught out i was like okay look listen here right if you're not going to provide evidence i'm not going to take your claim seriously so why don't you log off right for the day give it a couple of days maybe collate some evidence or some uh, some articles or some research and uh, come back to me and have a chat <laughs> then i'll listen to you because quite clearly, you don't have a clear head, mate. Sort it out. Sort it out, love. Like that cartoon. Hello, love. Um, mm. Let's uh, transition both gender-wise and topic-wise here for a moment. Already done that, mate. On the, already done it. Um, something happened in the UFC last night, which is not serious. So let me give everybody a, a breather from the Trump talk. You can go on any number of networks, but have this on in the background, obviously. Um, so as we parlay... I'm sorry. Why is she wearing eyelashes during a fight? That's the question we're asking, and we're going to ask... We're going to extrapolate from there. Um, we're going to make our own conspiracy. So last night, this girl, uh, Tracy Cortez, fought... 
and her eyelash got knocked off while she was fighting. Um, this was also a girl who, you know, she's constantly pulling at her shorts. Um, she's she's really concerned about her appearance while she's getting her yeah. face punched is, is the point. That's sad. And it, it, it's sad and it's very strange. And the thing that it makes me think of, and maybe I'm just cynical at this point, is why are we... When we are go- uh, into the fighting league, into, into the UFC, and our world is mar- mixed martial arts, why are we this concerned about our looks? And the reason why so many of these girls in the UFC and in MMA who aren't the most physically talented are so concerned about this, their looks is they're now treating the UFC and other sports like college basketball the way yep. women used to treat the WWE. This is now a launching pad to sell themselves as a sex object. And I think it's sad. And I think um, on both ends here of the spectrum in terms of, you know, extremely feminist and extremely unfeminist, you have this battle going on where you say, well, you can't tell me what to do with my body, blah, 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 blah. But on the other hand, you also have to respect me. And we see this with a lot of the talking female uh, conservative e-girl heads where they say, you know, what's wrong with this video of of chicks uh, doing TikToks at work? What's wrong with this video of, of Taylor Swift, you know, getting a vaccine <laughs> or something? It's like you can't have it both ways. So we're in a sport here, Lewis, where it's girls punching each other in the face. Respect for that. But also we want to be you know, an e-girl at the same time. So what is it about these sports, Lewis, where we're on one side, we're supposed to respect them for being an athlete and college basketball has become a cesspool for this, where you've got one girl who actually doesn't want to be a sex object. She just wants to play basketball. And the rest of them are just like, how dare you pay attention to her? Why aren't you paying attention to me for, for being on OnlyFans or something? But at the same time, it's mean if you have a problem with me doing that. What is this conundrum that obviously not all women fall under? But what is this conundrum that we're facing here um, um, from female commentators where they think that, you know, at the same time, they want to be respected for their opinions. But also um, you, you can't you can't criticize an obvious ploy for sexual attention because I don't think this girl in the UFC is thinking about fighting when she says I need fake eyelashes uh, um. during my fight. Well, you know, we have to be fair. Not every single female is going to go down the, the Paige Van Zant route. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we have to be fair with that. Um, quite clearly, this woman, I don't know who she is. I've never heard of her before. Quite clearly, she's single. Quite clearly, she, she feels insecure, which is sad, really, because, you know, if you're a fighter, the cameras are on you and you're there to knock the other per- like the other person out. So, really, your focus shouldn't be on your appearance, but how you're going to knock the other person out. I think that's kind of the main, because that's the bread and butter, right, of, uh, <laughs> of your career. Not if you've managed to put makeup on for the cameras, which is sad, really, because, you know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be like that. But then, you know, a woman could potentially, I'm not saying that they would use this as an argument, but they could say, well, why... Why, why is it when a UFC fighter that's male and gets a paycheck goes out and gets tattoos and then shows it off? You know, like, let's say McGregor gets, like, brand new tattoos on his, like, skin just to show it off. And it's like, well, you can't, you can't take that off, really. It's not a stick-on. So I guess, you know, you can't really use that as an argument. Or as makeup, it's like a, you put it on for gratification or you put it on because you're insecure or you want to impress. So there's there's different ways in which makeup is used to um, to I don't know uh, be the be the drive of what what exactly you want to portray. So I don't know. That's uh, my you notice my immediate reaction was I don't understand why she's got makeup on when she's about to you know, beat 10 tons out of uh, Nuna. Is that her name, Nuna, the opponent? Rose Namahunis. She's Namahunis. Lithuanian. I rem- yes, I remember watching her um, several years ago win her title for the first time, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't understand it. I, it. Quite clearly, it's just this individual woman that's um, insecure, uh, and like I said, not all women are going to go down the Paige Van Zant route 
of uh, cuckolding. But you know, <laughs> um, we'll just we'll just see how it plays out. Really, I mean, it's sad. I do think it's sad. Um, I kind of understand if you're a newbie, but no, UFC isn't about appearance. It's about knocking the other the other person out, your opponent out. So, the best yeah. fight, female fighter of all, all time, Amanda Nunes, is not exactly a sex symbol, let's say. No. Um, and I think that it's an admittance, subconscious admittance, that we're not that you don't think that this person doesn't think they're there for their talent. If you're gonna do this, it's because you think that you need to look pretty well while fighting in the the women's basketball, for example. In order for you to want attention doing this, you would know that this is more profitable than the sport you're actually playing, but at the same time, you want to be respected for the sport you're actually playing. Nobody's going to respect a person who, you know, sells their body. That's just not the, that's not reality. That's not biology. And this is the sort of the thing that, um, let's call them new girls and you like new metal, like Limp Biscuit. Hmm. If that's the way you want to live your life, that's fine, but it's not going to be respectable respectable lifestyle for 99% of men or women. You know what I'm saying? It's sort of just like, you know, like I, it's hard for me to find the equivalent for a man, but like a woman doesn't think that a man who, you know, acts really girly is an attractive thing. Um, so like if you want to find something like, uh, I don't think a male nurse is probably going to be too attractive to women or like, uh, you know, a, what's the, an esthetician that works on the nails. Like if you do something that's really like, against what your biological attraction is to that gender or that sex, then it's probably not going to be, you know, sought after. And, and, and unfortunately for some of these people being a whore <laughs> is not appealing to most people. Mm. I don't know what else I can add. If I'm totally honest, I just think I don't know what the decision was. I couldn't possibly comment on why she decided, but you can take a guess that, She's quite obviously either insecure, single, um, or I don't know. I don't know what the other... Or lost. Well, or just is new to this sort of realm. I mean, how She's many not. Times? She's a ranked okay. fighter. She was ranked okay. like 13th. Okay. She's not new. Then she's single. Or she's, um, she's insecure. It's one of the two. Or both. You know, there's a concoction of both. I, I mean double check for me in case she isn't single and i'm like okay well i don't understand why she's wearing makeup before she's about to have sweaty gloves well if she's not then that's a problem too because like why you want it's you bring up Paige vince and she, your your husband is selling you at that point you know? <laughs> yeah um well, no i'm not gonna look it up who cares well people look it up after um emc says love lewis brackpool great podcast thank you uh, please subscribe. Go to our patreon.com slash uopod for bonus content. Um, if you're an audio listener, he's cheersing the camera. That's what that was. Give us a rating on Spotify, Google, or Apple Podcasts. I think Google Podcasts are being eliminated. So wherever you find us, please subscribe. Patreon.com slash uopod. We'll finish by asking Lewis what he ate for breakfast, lunch, and dinner today so we can mock how English it was. What did I have for... Okay. Um, gosh. I had an apple for uh, for breakfast. A passes, so all right. Uh, went to church and we had... What did we have? We had tacos today. Wow. Uh, really good. And then we had like some sort of... I think it was like... Uh, it was almost like cheesecake uh, okay. with some fruit as well. And... Um, to end it, we had like pocket pizza. Oh, I say we. I went and made pocket pizzas during uh, <laughs> during the England game. And a gin and tonic, son. Love it. Wow. So completely normal food. The audience doesn't believe you at all. Um, <laughs> there was definitely a can of tomatoes in there. There was definitely a can of beans. There was a hockey puck. Fry up. Blood that's, pudding. That's the, yeah. that's the the depression fry up tomorrow morning after today's loss. Uh, you know, I'd also like to point out that your impression of David Icke was very similar to Mr. Bean, so we'll put that in there. I'm not doing oh, oh. impression of him, no. Oh, Mr. Bean, yeah. 
Hello, hello, I'm Mr. Bean. Um, Catch Lewis Brackpool on the latest season of Doctor Who. It's known as one of the most LGBT forward series of all time. But Lewis was in there in the gay dance club scene. You'll see Lewis in the background. If you go back even further, you can see Lewis in the second and third season of uh, Downton Abbey. But he's in the new season of Doctor Who. We need to get that trending. I'm going to start saying it on X if Lewis is okay with that. Because last time... Do you know what's so funny? Do you know what's so funny? The fact that you spread that lie saying that I was in season two of Downton Abbey... And then when you go onto Google and Google, type in yeah. Lewis Brackpool, it said Downton Abbey. That means people have searched it. It was like the third or fourth thing that people did when they it's searched your so name. Funny. That was so funny. It's not true, by the way. He's lying it to is. you. It is. It's true. He's going to hell. So, you know, I'm, re- I'm, you know, I'm praying for him. So hopefully he'll, uh, he'll repent. Thank you, Lewis. Um, I hope you don't go to hell for being in the disgustingness that is the latest season of Doctor Who. So I oh, hope that you don't go to hell for being adjacent to that. Um, <laughs> but I will start saying that on Twitter this week just for your benefit. Yeah. All right, everybody, say goodbye to Lewis. Do we have anything else in the chat here? Just uh, an emoji that I can't make out. So thank you, Lewis. It's, uh, you know, 11 p.m., Don't forget to sit outside and watch Big Ben as the clock hits 12. (laughs) Turn it up, Jordan.